Um, I'm going to talk to you and give you a prediction of the future of love. Um, how many here have watched an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation? Raise your hand. Raise your hand with pride. <laughs> yes. Star Trek The Next Generation is the best show ever on television. And if you've not watched it, I encourage you to do so. And if you have children or have children on the way, you should uh, make them watch it. They will learn so much. And even though it was made in the 1990s, it is still very valid today. It takes place in the 24th century, and so it's a, it's a past, now it's a past vision of what the future might be like, and I'm very happy to show you a little slice of it. Um, the Next Generation was part of an entire Star Trek universe. Um, the original series starting, starring um, Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner was on in the late 60s, and it wasn't very popular, but eventually it became popular. It took a while. And then there was a long break before The Next Generation started in the late 80s, and then there was Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager and a bunch of movies. And um, through the years, Star Trek has had a very important impact on my life. I don't think I would be as happy and stable and successful as if it wasn't for all of the Star Trek that I watched and absorbed through, through watching it and all of the friends that I've made through the years um, who also love Star Trek as well. And um, it's had a big impact on my life that at my job, I've been at Fawn Shop for about seven years now, I appointed a title of first officer. Um, which is, goes well for my job and is suitable. It's, it's what Commander Riker does on, um, on the Enterprise in the Next Generation. He knows what I'm talking about, <laughs> if you're laughing. Um, now, I would watch Star Trek all through my youth and my adulthood, and I would think, this is the future. This is what the future looks like. It's what it sounds like. Everyone is so happy, and they have problems and challenges. Look at what they wear, what they do, what kind of hobbies they have. And I thought, this is what I want the future to be like, and I hope that, that it becomes this somehow. And um, it's an, it's, there's lots to love about the television show. Um, it's science fiction, of course, and it takes place in space. And there are spaceships, and there are aliens, and weapons. But there's a lot of everyday life. Um, the people have hobbies. The people have relationships, friendly relationships, romantic relationships, professional relationships. They have arguments, and they deal with a lot of problems. Um, one of the great things about Star Trek is that a lot of the episodes have really touched on all sorts of humanitarian, social, political, economical things. And that's why I recommend everyone watch it and that you have your children watch it as well. Really, Star Trek should be part of, of grade school curriculum. <laughs> this is what chess will be like in the future. It will gain a dimension. This is a, a piano of the future. It's really a plastic prop that's painted, but in this particular episode, she rolls it out with, with ease, and she touches it, and she plays it, and it sounds like a piano. It sounds so amazing. And um, so much of what has been in Star Trek, to some degree, we are starting to have now. We have little portable devices that we hold in our hand and that we touch, and they beep, they make noise, and they show us information, and we can do things with them. Here's, uh, here's a, this is actually a movie on some sort of, really, it's probably a piece of cardboard, let's be honest. But it looks like it's real. It looks like it's in the future, and it looks like you were using it with ease. And um, tea, afternoon tea in the future, with a, for a business meeting with a little pizza or something. And um, here we are in a bar having a drink. That's Whoopi Goldberg on the right, and uh, LeVar Burton. Two very, like Star Trek has starred so many famous actors and actresses through the years, and it's made them into, into really prolific people. And um, we'll have our haircuts in the future as well. Here's a barber getting their haircut. There's some salon scenes where, where people gossip. Really, it's, it's, it's coming. And um, we'll even have pets. This is Data's cat spot. But we're here today to talk about love in the future. And um, what I've done is I've created a montage, um, a series of clips pulled from different episodes that feature love in a variety of ways and interactions and so on um, in the future. And, you can pick out a few themes that to sort of highlight. So imagine what we do now and what will hopefully remain in the future. So gifts. Giving your lover flowers or a smaller gift. Um, maybe it's your first date. And of course, clothing. Uh, we, what we wear is an expression of ourselves, and what you wear on a first date makes a very important impression. What you wear during sex is also important as well. Fetish wear, things like that. I mean, it goes so many levels, so many, so many different dimensions of of all these everyday things. And um, affection, what will affection be like in the future? On television, of course, everything is, at, music is added. So in Star Trek, there's really sappy music with long, drawn-out kissing scenes. It's really fun. I mean, it's supposed to be serious, but really it's quite humorous. 
And um, there are also a lot of things in Star Trek that you might want to question. How does the transporter really work? How does the food replicator really work? How do humans and aliens get along and uh, make children and so on? But things like this, we just, we just enjoy them and we don't really ask them too far. And as we'll see in just a moment, examples of all of these things, we'll see that uh, w what you see is not always what you get in your lovers. So I'm very happy to show you about three minutes of love in the future. What are they? A variety of Crystillia. Their fragrance is an evolutionary response to the acrid nature of the atmosphere on Telemarius IV. There. They're beautiful, Data. It's really sweet of you. Commander Riker suggested this particular flower. He said it had worked for him in the past. Oh, come now, Picard. You know you find me tantalizing. Give in to your desire. You wanted me? Much better. Thank you. Coming for a drink? I haven't been able to stop thinking about you all day. Day. Anticipation is fun. We'll be late for dinner. Very late. How handsome you look. Thank you. Compliments of the USS Enterprise. It's called an Albany meditation crystal. Very impressive. And now I must repay you in kind. Star Trek won a lot of Emmy Awards for the costumes, as you can see. Um, so love in the future. We'll see you there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>